Okay, we're going to look at dilation and scale factor in this lesson. This is lesson one of two. There's two parts to this. Um, so the first part we're going to try and discuss what this is. By the end of it, you'll know what all of this means, these um, weird octagons there, green and yellow. All right. Dilation is when an image shrinks or expands, becomes larger or smaller, smaller or larger, I should have said, but maintains the same ratio of the size. So that's when um, your uh, figure is dilating. The scale factor is how much it changes from the pre-image to the image. For today's class, we're going to use consistently the color green for the pre-image and yellow for the image. Um, just basically, it starts green and it changes yellow, unlike this arrow that says it goes back and forth. So all the other ones, you'll see it goes from green to yellow. We'll try and be consistent. So looking down at my hand to pull out a sliver, I use a magnifying glass. It makes my hand look three times as large. What is the scale factor? So first of all, I'm going to determine, is this a dilation? We know that my hand keeps its proportions, all right? So it's the ratio factor between them does not change. My hand doesn't change when I'm looking at it. It's just being enlarged. So it is a dilation. And because it's getting bigger, the dilation will be greater than 1, all right? And that's going to be something we talk about a little bit more. But if, a dil if it's getting bigger, the dilation is going to be greater than 1. And more specifically, the absolute value of the dilation is greater than 1. And we'll talk about that, like I said, in a bit. So we know it's getting 3 times larger. So the dilation is 3 because my image is, my hand image is increased by a factor of 3. So that's how we would solve that type of a word problem um, using dilation. Now, the other end of things is when things shrink down. And this one is a little bit harder to calculate, I think. Um, but there is a way to do that. I took a picture, and it's 1,000 centimeters by 2,000 centimeters. I like big pictures. And I want to fit it in my house. In fact, I want to fit it in a picture frame that is 5 centimeters by 10 centimeters. What is the scale factor? So when I get a question like this, the picture is getting smaller. So the scale factor will be a fraction. I know that. When it goes from larger to smaller, it's a fraction. And the way I think about that is it's a fraction is a part of a whole. Right? The numerator is part. The denominator is the whole. A fraction is smaller than 1. All right? And the absolute value of a fraction is smaller than 1. So what we're going to look at then is when it's getting smaller, we use a scale factor that's smaller than 1. To find the scale factor, I look at the fraction that was given in the original question. And I ask myself, how does it get from the first to the second? So in other words, how does it get from 1,000 over 2,000 to 5 over 10? Also, if these are not equivalent fractions, then it is not a proportion. They're not proportional. Then it would not be dilation. It would be another type of, of change. But they are proportional. 1,000 over 2,000 is equal to 5 over 10. I have to ask myself, what do I do to get from the image, 1,000 over 2,000, to, or the pre-image, I'm sorry, 1,000 over 2,000, to my image, or my new image, 5 over 10? And so what I needed to do, 1,000 divided by 200 is 5, and 2,000 divided by 200 is 10. So I needed to divide the top and bottom by 200. All right, now I need to get that out of my way so that I have room to finish the question. Thank you. All right. Because we divided by 200, the scale is 1 over 200. And we know that 1 over 200, whenever you have a fraction, something over 200, it means divided by 200. So 1 over 200 is the same as dividing by 200. If it was from, went from smaller to larger, you would be multiplying times a number. And in that case, you would have a scale factor larger than 1. It's whatever you'd be multiplying times. Another way to think about this is that the number you multiply times the pre-image that will give you your new image. Multiplying times a fraction is the same thing as dividing. 
So that's, that's kind of a key factor there. And that was a factor in both the first one and the second one. The scale factor is the number you multiply times the pre-image that will give you the new image or the image. So when you multiply times a fraction, it's the same as dividing. So if it's getting smaller, you're going to have a fraction for your scale factor. If it's getting larger, you will have a number greater than 1. The absolute value, I should say, because it can be positive or negative. And we're going to talk about that right now. With positive and negative dilation, um, this is how we work. The negative dilation is when the image on the, is on the opposite side of the center of dilation. So the center of dilation here is the point where all of these lines would converge. All right? And if you have a center of dilation here, the pre-image is on the opposite side of, of the center of dilation from our image, that will give us a negative dilation. So in this case, we're looking at it going, well, it started out big, and it ended up small. So why would this scale factor be a negative fraction? Well, it started out big, it ended up small. So because it's shrinking, it's going from larger to smaller, it would be a fraction. And because it's on opposite sides of the center of dilation, it would be negative. So the size of the pre-image versus the image, that's what determines whether it is a fraction or a positive or a whole number bigger than one, or a fraction bigger than one, I, should, I mean, it could be. So if it's less than one fraction, then it's going from larger to smaller. And if positive to negative means negative is on opposite sides of the center of dilation. Let's look at um, this now. What happens if we have the pre-image smaller and the image larger, but again, they're on opposite sides of the center of dilation? Kind of makes us think about it a little bit, which is good. It's good to think. Well, it goes from smaller to larger, so we know that we will have a scale factor greater than 1. And they are opposite sides of the center of dilation, so it's going to be negative. So I'm going to have a negative scale factor that is, has an absolute value greater than 1. In other words, the number itself is greater than 1, even though it's negative. Obviously, everything negative is going to be less than 1. So that's why I say this absolute value part. The number itself is going to be bigger than 1 because it's going from smaller to larger. And it's going to be negative because they're on opposite sides of the center of dilation. Let's look at some positive dilation. Positive dilation looks like this, where you have the pre-image, the image, and then you've got the center of dilation over here. So both the pre-image and image are on the same side of the center of dilation. All right? So with negatives, they're on opposite sides of the center of dilation. With positives, they're on the same side. You see that the pre-image and image are both over here. So what kind of um, a scale factor would I get if I had something like this? The pre-image is big. Our image is small, so it's shrinking down in size. Because it's shrinking down in size, that means I have a fraction. Because they are both on the right side of the center of dilation, it's going to be positive. So that's why this would be a positive fraction. Pre-image is big, it shrinks down to the, to the image. So it's getting smaller, it's shrinking, that means it's going to be a fraction. But whether it's positive or negative is based on where the center of dilation is. How about this one? What would be the scale factor for this? It starts here, and it grows, expands, to being this one. Because it expands, it's going to be a, a number greater than 1. Because they're both on this side of the center of dilation, it's going to be a positive number. So a positive number greater than 1. Now let's take a look and give you a little bit of practice. Where would the center of dilation be if this has a positive scale factor greater than 1? Take a minute, pause the recording, try and figure that out. And then I'm going to continue on and show you the answer. 
All right, so there's the answer for this. If the cent, where is the center of dilation if this has a positive scale factor greater than one? The pre-image is here, the image is here. So it's getting larger, which means, and that just, that's the only way you can have a, a, po, a scale factor greater than one. So it has to be that way. It has to be a smaller pre-image than an image. So the main question is where is the center of dilation? The center of dilation is going to be way out here because both images have to be on the same side if it's going to be a positive scale factor. Now, if we had space, you could have drawn it an equal distance in that direction. That would have been fine. All right? But the center of dilation in this case, I gave us space to draw it over here. All right? And for that, you draw a line through each corresponding side, boom, 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 and straight across. So there is a second line from this one to this one, but it's just the same. All right? Next question. Where would the center of dilation be if it has a negative scale factor greater than 1? So again, pre-image to image, we know it's going to be greater than 1, our scale factor. But now we've changed it to being a negative scale factor. Where would our center of dilation be? Go ahead and pause the recording and try and figure that one out. Where would our center of dilation be if it has a negative scale factor greater than 1? All right, now I'm going to give you the answer. The center of dilation would need to be in between. All right? For the, it to have a negative scale factor, the center of dilation needs to be in between. This is still the pre-image because it's smaller than the image. So the, that means that the scale factor is greater than 1. But it is a negative because we have the center of dilation there. And again, the corresponding sides sort of are funky with this because um, with a center of dilation like this, it's, it's not like this one corresponds with this one. It's actually a little bit more like a, a flip. And you can see that where which sides are corresponding. It sort of flips the whole thing around this center. All right, this side or this um, this uh, vertex here would be corresponding with this one now. All right, so it's, it sort of flips it all around. But our pre-image is here. I should say this one here corresponds with that one because our pre-image is here, and then we move to being a larger image. Now here's the big challenge question. I think this is the last question on here. Big challenge question. I want you to make this have a negative scale factor less than 1. Go ahead and pause the recording and try and figure out how would you make this have a negative scale factor that is less than 1. Pause the recording. Try and figure that one out. And now I'm going to give you the answer because I can't make this video too terribly long. Um, the trick was, and you can see this here when I switch back and forth, to have a scale factor less than 1, that means that the pre-image needs to be larger than the image. So we actually have to switch this to being the pre-image and this to being the image. And that was the challenge. Because um, a negative scale factor is still going to have them all converging in, in between. But the trick with this is if the scale factor is less than 1, then the pre-image is larger. So it's moving to being something smaller than the image. All right, in other words, it's a fraction. Our pre-image gets smaller to become our new image. So that was kind of our challenge question there. If you got that one, you're really showing that you understand how this all works. So we've talked about several, several, several different things. We talked about what is dilation and scale factor. What do we do to make them bigger or smaller? We did a couple sample word problems, one with a magnifying glass, and then one shrinking down a picture that I took. Um, then we talked about positive and negative dilation, finding the center of dilation. So we talked about a lot of things. All right? But the key to this is that there is a lot to remember. You can go back and review as many times as you want. And the key to understanding this is to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Take the things that, that you've seen in this video, try and make your own types of questions about them and practice that. And see, see if that helps you to understand. Also, there will be a part two of the scale and dilation. So watch the channel for that. And I'll see you next time.